So you updated macOS on your new MacBook, iMac, or Mac Mini because you had an annoying bug, right? And now you find yourself with even worse bugs? Well, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot I can do to help you out right now. But what I can do is help you prepare for the next update by showing you how to create a bootable flash drive so you can downgrade later if needed. Hey, I'm Jerry. And if you're a current Mac user, you may have noticed some bugs in the last couple of years. And let's face it, it's a computer and software moves fast these days, so a bugs are gonna happen. Some bugs are not so bad, like the Bluetooth disconnects, and some are just downright awful, like computers not being able to boot up after connecting certain USB docks. And of course, there's issues with external displays not turning on or coming up in a weird resolution or whatever. Apple has made it a little more difficult to download previous copies of macOS after new versions are released. So in this video, we're going to look at how to create a bootable, boot, boot, bootable flash drive of your current version of macOS just in case you need it after upgrading. And at the end, I'll show you how you can revert to a previous major macOS release if your computer came with something other than what you're running right now. For example, if your computer came with Catalina originally and you've updated to Big Sur, but now you wanna go back. To create a bootable flash drive of your current version of macOS, you're going to need a flash drive that is at least 16 gigabytes. And we're going to erase the whole drive in the process. The one I like for this is the SanDisk 64 gigabyte ultra dual drive, which has a USB-A and a USB-C side that's pretty speedy. They have a 32 gigabyte version for $10 and a 64 gig version for 15. And you can find a link to those in the description below. Next, you need to download the current version of macOS from the Mac App Store, which unfortunately is 11.2.3 at this moment. You're going to have to be patient because the download will probably take a while, depending on your internet connection. Once the download completes, the macOS install will try and start automatically, but instead of going through the install, we're going to quit the install app. And you can see the install macOS Big Sur app inside the applications folder on the Mac. Next, we're going to open up the terminal application from the utilities folder and we're going to copy and paste the create media command, which you can find in the Apple support article, which I'll link to in the description below. We're going to be creating a Big Sur installation disk, so we want to use the Big Sur command. What this command is telling the Mac to do is to use elevated permissions and then use the create install media tool to copy files to the drive that you want. You need to be sure that you change the name of the drive in the command to the actual name of your USB drive In my case, it's flash drive. If you're prompted at any point to give terminal permissions, click allow and move on. Hit the enter button when ready and type in your admin password when prompted. Then retype it because you messed it up. Type Y and hit enter to agree to wiping the flash drive. The tool will format and copy the install files over to the USB drive. This process will usually take at least a few minutes depending on the speed of your USB drive. After the copy is complete, the Create Install Media tool will make the drive bootable. And when that's ready, you now have a bootable USB drive that you can use with your Mac in recovery mode to reinstall this version of Mac OS. And just for my own sanity, I like to create a folder in the root directory of the USB drive and name it the version of Mac OS. This is for easy reference. Now what I'll be doing going forward is creating a new flash drive for each version of Mac OS and have a couple lying around just in case I need to go back. I have three of these SanDisk drives now and you can wrap tape around them and write the version on each one so you don't get them confused. As a bonus, you can even copy that install Mac OS Big Sur application to another drive or backup somewhere else just in case and you'll have it if you ever need it. Now what we want to do is boot the Mac into recovery mode and erase the Mac. And at this point, I guess I should probably tell you that to downgrade means that you're actually going to need to wipe the disk on the Mac. This will erase all data, and after the install, you can restore your files and apps from Time Machine backups or from some other backup if you have it. To erase an M1 Mac, you need to boot into recovery mode by holding down the power button from the shutdown state. You will see a prompt to continue holding for startup options, and then it'll say loading startup options. Click on options and then click continue. You will be prompted to enter your account password, so do that and hit continue. To wipe the disk, we need to open up Disk Utility. Go to the View menu and select Show All Devices. 
Click the APFS container that is above Macintosh HD and then click on Erase and Erase. You will get a prompt about erasing your Mac and just follow the prompts and reboot when it tells you to. Once the computer reboots, the Mac needs to activate like an iOS device, so you will need to connect to Wi-Fi. And if you had Find My Mac enabled, you will also need to enter your Apple ID and password. At this point, if you continue with the install, you'll be installing from the internet, so you want to actually shut down and insert the USB drive you created. If you're just installing the latest version and not necessarily the version that's on your USB drive, you can continue and install from internet, but it's going to take quite a while to download the OS version and install it. With the USB drive inserted, you can now boot into the startup options again, then choose boot from your install disk so you can install the OS from the USB drive instead of over the internet. I found that you actually need to erase the disk again at this point, so quit the installer and open up Disk Utility. Click Show All Devices. Click on the APFS container again and Erase again. Now we can quit Disk Utility and finally start the installation. You just need to follow all of the prompts and select your disk from the install location and then follow some more prompts. Now somewhere between 20 and 60 minutes, you're going to be good to go and you can set up the Mac just like if it was brand new, but now it's running the version of Mac OS that you installed. That wasn't so bad, right? Now there are a couple of differences with Intel Macs. To boot into the flash drive with an Intel Mac, you need to hold down the option key and then you can select your disk. If you have an Intel Mac with a T2 chip, you actually need to change the boot security settings before you can boot into the flash drive you created. To enter recovery mode on an Intel Mac, you need to hold Command R when booting, then type in the admin password when prompted. Go to the Utilities menu and select Startup Security Utility. Enter the username and password again. Now we're going to select the box that says Allow Booting from External or Removable Media. And now you can reboot into the Install Media, wipe the disk, and install macOS. Okay, so. That's how you create an install disk with the current version of macOS, boot up into that install media, wipe the internal drive, and install macOS. Having a backup copy of a previous version of macOS can be a benefit and useful in case you ever have issues and you need to downgrade to a previous version. Yes, restoring from a backup or reinstalling apps can be a pain in the butt, but if you're suffering from a bug that affects your workflow, then downgrading macOS may be the only option. Now, I did say at the beginning that I would show you how to revert to a previous major macOS release, like going from Big Sur to Catalina. This will only work on an Intel-based Mac that came with a previous release. For example, if you have a 2019 or 2020 iMac that came with Catalina, and after upgrading to Big Sur, you decided you want to go back to Catalina. Or, of course, something like the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro that came with Catalina, you upgraded to Big Sur, you want to go back. To do this, you can boot into recovery mode again, but this time, Hold down Shift, Option, Command, R on boot. You will need to connect to either Wi-Fi or Ethernet, and this will boot your Mac into a recovery mode that will allow you to install the original version of software that came with the computer. So, I hope that these tips were useful and maybe they'll help you out going forward when dealing with macOS issues from updates. Let me know below if this is something you plan to try or if you have any other great tips to share. If you're going to reinstall macOS, you wanna make sure that you do have a good backup and one way to do that is to back up your Macs with Synology. And if you need a little bit of help with that, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.